हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग सो इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू रिगार्डिंग द एस्टिमेशन ऑफ हेरिटेबिलिटी बाय पैटर्नल हाफ सिप को मेथड सो मेनी ऑफ यू हैव डिमांडेड दैट आई शुड कवर सम ऑफ द न्यूमेरिकल टाइप क्वेश्चन बिफोर योर आई सी आर जे आर एफ एग्जामिनेशन सो आई थिंक दैट दिस टाइप ऑफ न्यूमेरिकल्स इट विल नॉट बी आस्ट इन योर आई सी आर एफ जे आर एफ एग्जामिनेशन दो इट विल बी वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द सब्जेक्ट सो दैट इन डायरेक्टली यू मे बी सॉल्विंग मेनी अदर क्वेश्चन सो ऑन योर डिमांड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू हाउ टू एस्टिमेट हेरिटेबिलिटी एंड द मोस्ट कॉमन मेथड ऑफ एस्टिमेशन ऑफ हेरिटेबिलिटी इन इंडिया इज पैटर्नल हाफ सिप को रिलेशन मेथड सो बिफोर दैट आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू ब्रश अप सम थेरिटिकल नॉलेज अबाउट द हेरिटेबिलिटी सो वी नो दैट हेरिटेबिलिटी हेरिटेबिलिटी कैन बी डिफाइंड इन मेनी वेज so broadly it can be divide defined in three ways the first is mathematical second is statistical and third genetical so many of us are focusing mainly on the math, uh, genetical definition of the statistics or from animal genetics point of view the genetical definition is important though statistical and mathematical definitions are also having their own import, importance so most of you may be knowing that heritability can be defined in two ways genetically it can be defined in two way the first is broad sense and another is the narrow sense you might have heard or you might have studied in your theory portion so th this may be defined into broad sense and narrow sense so in broad sense you can say heritability is the ratio of genetic variance and phenotypic variance genetic variance and phenotypic variance and that is why it has been shown by capital h square that is that is the heritability in broader sense similarly in narrow sense you can say heritability is the ratio of additive genetic additive genetic variance to the phenotypic variance additive genetic variance to the phenotypic variance so this is the heritability in narrow sense narrow sense why because the broad genetic variance has been limited to additive genetic variance that is why it is called as uh, heritability in the narrow sense so genetically heritability is defined uh, as that it measures the degree to which offspring resemble their parent so this is this is uh, the heritability shows how and what is the degree that offspring resemble their parent in performance for a trait similarly if you see mathematically the mathematically heritability is measure of the strength measure of the strength so strength of what the strength of consistency reliability or correspondence so it is a measure of strength of relationship between phenotypic value and breeding value so you have to remember it is the measure of strength of association or a strength of relationship measure of strength of relationship between phenotypic value and breeding value phenotypic value and breeding value and we are measuring a strength in terms of consistency reliability or correspondence so this is the mathematical definition of heritability and it can be represented as heritability is equal to correlation between breeding value and phenotypic value a is breeding value and p is the phenotypic so then statistically heritability is regression of breeding value on phenotypic value so heritability can also be defined as the regression of breeding value on phenotypic value that is h square is equal to b a p b is the regression coefficient so b a p means regression of breeding value on phenotypic value so this is how heritability can be defined so this this many definition you have to remember about the heritability now the next is the limit of heritability so you, we all know the limits of heritability is it varying from 0 to 1 but here if you see i have written on the both extreme in at this extreme it is 0 and this extreme it is 1 
so it is clear that it is varying from 0 to 1 but if you see the broad sense irritability will be greater than the narrow sense irritability so if you see if you arrange it in the ascending order the first one it will be 0 then heritability in narrow sense then heritability in broad sense and then it will be 1 so the heritability varies from 0 to 1 but broad sense heritability is more than the narrow sense heritability now some of the properties of heritability so some of the properties just i will go briefly uh, if you want to discuss a, a, it will take another uh, one class for discussing the properties of heritability but simply just i am refreshing here what are the properties of heritability it is said that inherited are not always heritable so there are many character or many traits which are controlled by gene but they are not heritable so that is why the statement is inherited are not always heritable then high heritability what high heritability indicates we have already seen that it is uh, it indicates the strong relationship between phenotypic value and breeding value so if for a trait heritability is high this shows the uh, strong relationship between breeding value and phenotypic value then heritability is the population measure not a measure of individual animal so whenever somebody is talking about heritability you have to assume that it is the property of population not of a particular animal then heritability is the property of trait the population and environmental condition so these are the factors that will influence the heritability it is a property of trait that means it varies from trait to trait it varies from population to population and the environmental condition also plays important role in estimation of heritability so if environment is changed the heritability will definitely change so these are the properties of heritability now coming to the method of methods of estimation of it is methods of estimation of heritability in livestock and poultry so there are broadly three measures three methods the method based on direct relatives the method based on collateral relatives and third the selection experiment and heritability estimation so first on the basis of information received from direct relatives then collateral relatives and by performing experiments so these are the broad methods of estimation of heritability and within that there are many other methods so in direct relatives the first is the regression of offspring on parent Refresh, regression of offspring on parent and second is the correlation method so two, uh, again two method regression method and correlation method in regression method regression of offspring on one parent the first one is the one offspring per parent so if one offspring is produced per parent in that another two type uh, two method the first is the regression of offspring on dam ignoring the sire. that means regression of offspring on one parent and that one parent is dam then second method is intra sire regression of offspring on dam that is popularly known as ISRD intra sire, intra -sire regression of offspring on dam then second method is more than one offspring per parent so first one was the one offspring per parent second is the more than one offspring per parent then third is the regression of offspring on mid parent value BOP bar BOP bar that is mid parent value so these are the regression method regression of offspring on one parent then another is the correlation method correlation methods so correlation between parent and offspring correlation between parent and offspring then second one is the intra sire correlation between parent and offspring so these are the these are the method of estimation of heritability based on direct relatives based on the information received from direct relatives then second one is the collateral relatives sorry collateral relatives second on the, uh, the based on the information received from collateral relatives so in that the first is intra class correlation and in that intra class correlation uh, we can estimate heritability by taking intra class correlation between half sieve or between full sieves and another is the comparison of twin data so if we are having twins we can compare the twin data and we can find the heritability 
then third broad classification is the selection experiment and heritability estimation so in that we can measure apparent heritability or realized heritability so realized heritability we will be taking in certain other class here in this lecture we will be concentrating on the methods of estimation of heritability by information on collateral relatives and which collateral relative so it will be the half sip and that half sip the paternal half sip we will be concentrating on concentrating on the paternal half sip so why paternal half sip so just see in the next slide why paternal half sip correlation method so in paternal half sip correlation method also there are two condition there will be two condition the first condition will be the equal number of progeny per sire so that means ki suppose you are having 10 sires so each sire is producing equal number of progeny let us say 5 progeny per sire so each sire will have 5 progeny so uh why paternal half sip correlation method because it will be useful for uniparous animal with long generation interval example cattle and buffalo so in cattle and buffalo we can go for paternal half sip correlation method here each sire is mated to several dam and each dam produce one progeny so we will have one progeny per dam not per sire one progeny per dam and each sire will be mated to several dams so the sieve sieves resemble to each other because they have some common gene so this is based on the resemblance between relatives resemblance between the relatives so since half sieves they are getting they are getting 1/4 of the gene from their common parent that is sire so 1/4 gene is common between the uh, half sieves so that is why we can estimate heritability from here the intra class correlation between paternal half sieve is more commonly used due to the fact that they have more numerous than maternal half sieve so that is what i was willing to say you that pa why paternal half sieve because paternal half sieves are you can obtain more paternal half sieves rather than maternal half sieve why because in our in indian uh, in indian uh, condition sire the semen of sire can be used on many of the dams so one sire will produce many of the progeny rather than dam so that is why there will be more paternal half sip in comparison to the maternal half sip that is why we will get adequate data for estimation of heritability by paternal half sip so i hope it is clear that why this uh, paternal half sip correlation method is used rather than uh, maternal half sip now coming to the estimation of heritability by paternal half sip method so first of all we will see the models so here you can see the model yij is equal to mu plus si plus eij so what are these notations ye <coughs> you have already studied about the one way or two way anova <coughs> in the in your statistics class in unit 1 so here mu is overall mean mu is overall mean si what is si si is the effect of ith sire effect of any sire ith sire eij is the random environmental error random environmental error associated with the estimation any kind of uh, error that is Uh, created due to environment or any other things ei is the random error mostly environment then yij what is yij it is the individual observation of half sip progeny so the performance of half sip progeny 1 2 3 suppose 10 progeny are there then you will have 10 yijs so this is the mathematical model statistical model based on which we will be calculating the heritability now what are the steps to estimate heritability just i have uh, uh, summarized here what are different steps involved in the estimation of heritability you just note that it is similar to the uh, estimation of one way anova or when we were performing anova we were we were uh, doing these uh, all steps so you may be remembering that so first one is the estimation of correction factor then total sum of square 
between sides sum of a square or in ANOVA you may be telling simply it as a between side between sum of a square then error sum of a square also known as residual sum of a square then preparation of ANOVA table ANOVA table you have already prepared then estimation of k value this is important estimation of k value we will be uh, discussing what is k then estimation of variance component variance component and thereby heritability so lastly you have to estimate the variance component and you know the heritability you have already seen that in narrow sense it is va by vp that is additive genetic variance divided by phenotypic variance whereas in broad sense it is uh, vg by vp that is uh, genetic variance divided by phenotypic variance so this was about the statistical model now just uh, after steps now you will we will see a simple example simple example so in this example i have taken the sires who have produced you are who are having equal number of progeny in another in the next problem we will see when the progenies are not equal so you uh, just uh, i will read here there are three sires each mated to three dam three sire three dam and each dam is having one one progeny so there will be one progeny per dam the average daily milk yield record of the progeny was as follows so this is the average milk yield average milk yield here you can see the progeny 1 2 3 produced by mating of sire 1 and dam 1 sire 1 dam 2 sire 1 dam 3 sire 2 dam 1 sire 2 dam 2 sire 2 dam 3 so likewise you can see the progeny of sire 1 progeny of sire 2 and progeny of sire 1 sire 2 and sire 3 now you can get the row wise total row wise total then here you can get the column wise total column wise total and this is the overall overall total so this is the question this is the example which for which we have to determine the heritability for which we have to determine the heritability. now first of all we have to determine the correction factor so you know correction factor is the each and individual value will be squared and summed uh, oh sorry uh, the correction factor is equal to grand total square divided by total number of observations so here you can see uh, sorry if you see the previous slide if you see the previous slide here you can see the grand total is 45 and total number of observation is 9 so what we will do we will get the correction factor so correction factor is 225 now another uh, the next step is getting the total sum of a square or here i have written it as a crude sum of a square actually a crude means there is no nothing uh, nothing has been subtracted from here or nothing has been added here you can simply write it as a total sum of a square tss i have written here it as a crude total sum of a square because the next one is the corrected total sum of a square so here the total sum of a square you know it is summation x i j square what is x i j square here each and every observation you have to square it and then you have to sum it and that will give you the total sum of a square so each and every observation has been squared you just see simply see the table here so each and every starting from 3 square up to 2 square up to 2 square up to this 2 square starting from starting from 3 square to up to 2 square so in this way here you will get the uh, get the total sum, sum of square as 297 now you have to find out the corrected total sum of square so for correct getting corrected total sum of square you have to subtract correction factor from total sum of square so total sum of square was 297 minus 225 is equal to 72 so 72 is the corrected total sum of square now the next step is getting the between sire sum of square so for getting between sire sum of square you have to you have to square the sire's values so what is sire's values you can see you can see in the question the sire's value here you will get the 21950 21950 
so you can see here it is 21 square 9 square 15 square divided by total number of total number of observation so you know here the total number of observations are equal that is 3 so in this way you will get the and it will be subtracted by the correction factor in this way you will get the between side sum of a square is equal to 24 you will get the between sum of a square as 24 now the error sum of a square or residual sum of a square or within sire sum of a square so what is within sum of sire sum of a square is equal to total sum of a square minus between sire sum of a square and it can be represented as ssw ssw so here you can see the within sum of a square uh, is equal to total sum of a square what is total sum of a square it was total sum of a square is it was 72 total sum of a square that means corrected total sum of a square a, a was 72 and between sire sum of a square between sire sum of a square was 24 was 24 so 72 minus 24 is equal to 42 so this was the error sum of a square or you can say the within sire sum of a square 48 now you have to prepare the ANOVA table ANOVA table so for you know the component of ANOVA table sources of variation degree of freedom sum of a square mean sum of a square and the another one is the expected mean square in heritability estimation you have to write a separate column expected mean square so what are the sources of variation between sire and error so between sire you know the the degree of what will be the degree of freedom number of sires minus 1 so number of sires were 3 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 and what will be the error error is the num uh, total number of observation total number of progeny minus sire so 9 minus 3 is equal to 6 so between sire sum of a square you can write it as SSS and it is 24 already we have calculated total sum of square it is total of sum of a square due to sire it is 24 if you just want to recollect it you just go this side so total sum of a square total sum of a square we have calculated here 72 uh, sorry between sire sum of square sorry. between sum of sire sum of a square we have calculated 24 so what we will do we will see here it is 24 similarly what is within sire sum of a square so already we have calculated within sire sum of a square or residual error sire sum of a square is equal to 72 minus 24 that is 48 48 so in this way uh, you got the sum of squares now you have to find the mean sum of a square so for getting mean sum of a square you have to divide it with uh, divide the sum of a square by respective degree of freedom so sum of a square between sire was 24 divided by total number of uh, degree of freedom of sire is equal to 2 24 by 2 is, that is 12 similarly the error sum of a square so sum of the square uh, within the sire sum of square due to within sire divided by n minus s that is the number of number of degree of freedom of error so it will be 48 by 6 that is 8 so this is how we got the mean sum of a square now coming to the expected sum of a square so you know the error sum uh, expected mean square expected mean square the additional column when we are calculating heritability so the residual sum of a square or error sum of a square can be represented by sigma square w that is also called as within sum of a square within sum of a square and what about the between sum of a square so between sum of a square will be within sum of a square plus k into sire sum of a square k into sire sum of a square so you know uh, sum of square that is sigma square s we have already we are already knowing sigma square w we have already calculated so in this way you can get the heritability how you have to find the k you have to find the k now just see what are the different notations s is equal to number of sire n is equal to number of individual sigma square w is the error component or within sire variance n is the number of ni that is ni is the number of progenies of ith sire k this k 
K I told you to discuss that K is equal to number of progeny per sire. Number of progeny per sire. So here, then in this question, the number of progeny per sire was three. So here K is equal to three, and sigma square S is equal to sire component of variance. So now, you have to calculate the heritability. So you know this is the formula of K. If the number of sires or sorry number of progeny per sire is not equal. then you have to calculate the k by this method but here in our case the number of sires as uh, a number of progeny per sire is equal and that is 3 that is why here what i have written that k value has been replaced by 3 now you see sigma square s what is sigma square s how you can find the sigma square s just see just see the previous table here you can say in this table sigma square w plus k sigma square is equal to 12 sigma square w plus k sigma square s is equal to w so what we can write sigma square s i think we can write sigma square s is equal to sigma square s s is just a minute not sigma square s we want to ah okay sigma square s what we can write k is equal to k is equal to k is equal to m s mean sum of square due to sire i just i will write clearly mean sum of square due to sire minus sigma square within sigma uh, with, with within sire sum of square within sire sum of square so sigma square s is equal to mean sum of square due to sire minus error sum of square divided by k so this can be obtained from this formula from this formula from this formula i hope it is clear to everyone Sigma square s is equal to mean sum of square due to sire minus error sum of square. So divided by k. Now you know many of the uh, meaning of the different notations. So here the same thing I have written here. Sigma square s is equal to m s s that is mean sum of square due to sire minus m s w that is within sire. Mean sum of square divided by k. K is the number of progeny per sire. So you can write M S S. You know twelve. M S W. That is error sum of square. You know eight. Twelve minus eight divided by three. That is one point three three four. So this one point three three four is sigma square s. Now sigma square w. You you already know it is eight. Now you know sigma square s. you have sigma square w you know the k also so we know the vp vp that is phenotypic variance is equal to is equal to variance due to sire plus variance due to error variance due to sire plus variance due to error so this is the formula phenotypic variance is equal to variance due to sire plus variance due to error So sire variance you have already calculated 1.334. So 1.334 plus sigma square w error variance it is equal to 8. So total VP is equal to 9.334. Total VP is equal to 9.334. So now you know you are having you are having sigma square s. You are having sigma square w. You calculated the phenotypic variance. Now you have to Calculate the intra-class correlation. Intra-class correlation that is T. Intra-class correlation. Why we want to know the intra-class correlation? Because we want to know intra-class correlation because intra-class correlation will show the relationship between the two uh, half shifts. So we know the relationship between the half shift will be one by four. Relationship between the half shift will be one by four. So first we will calculate the intra-class correlation. Intra-class correlation will be given by sigma square s divided by sigma square s plus sigma square w. 
so what is sigma square s it is the variance of sire variance divided by phenotypic variance sigma square s plus sigma square w will be the phenotypic variance so how you will determine this 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 is t and you know the it, uh, relationship between the half shift relationship between the half shift will be four times the intra class correlation four times the intra class correlation so the heritability heritability by half shift method it will be four four into t four into t it will be multiplied by four because the relationship between half shift will be one by four so for getting full heritability getting full heritability we have to multiply it with the four so h square heritability is equal to four sigma square s divided by sigma square s plus sigma square w so you know the half shift they are getting one fourth of the gene half shift the relation uh, if you calculate the coefficient of correlation it will be one by four so that is why here we are multiplying the intra class correlation with four if it is full shift then the relationship will be uh, will be one by two so in that case if we are determining heritability by full shift method we have to multiply it by two the intra class correlation will be multiplied by two but here you by, uh, since we are estimating it with the um, half shift method we will multiply it by four so that is why here you see four into one point three three four 4 into 1.334 divided by 1.334 plus 8 and if you calculate you will get the heritability as 0 0.5716 0 0.5716 so this is the heritability this is actually the heritability sorry this is actually the heritability that is 0 0.5716 so here you have to remember that in case of half sim the intra class correlation will be multiplied by 4 in case of full save it will be multiplied by 2 and what is the formula for intra class correlation the intra class correlation is equal to variance d2 share divided by phenotypic uh, phenotypic variance that is sigma square s plus sigma square w so based on that we can conclude that around 57.16 percent variation in average daily milk killed of sample population is due to genetic effect this heritability indicate that 57 percent is due to genetic effect now next question i have uh, just uh, will pass it through because the only change is that here the number of progenies are not equal number of progenies are not equal here the number of in case of sire 1 the progeny is 3 in sire 2 it is 2 and in sire uh, sorry in sire 2 it is 4 and in sire 3 it is 2 so simply you have to follow all the seven steps that we are uh, performing while calculating heritability the first you have to calculate the correction factor so here all the observation has been uh, summed up and square so 154 square divided by total number of observation to so 3 plus 4 plus 2 that is 9 so 154 square divided by 9 is equal to 2635.11 so this is very easy now the next step you have to find the total sum of square total sum of square so total sum of square if you go the back slide the total sum of square is equal to each and every observation you have to square it plus it and you have to subtract by correction factor so you squared it from 15 square up to 18 square minus correction factor so in this way you will get the total sum of square total sum of square that is 18.9 now between sum of square between sum of square so between sum of square that means uh, between sum of square that means higher sum of square between higher sum of square so summation xi square divided by ni minus correction factor so you know in each case you are having different number of sires so if you remember in the previous example we have multiplied it equally sorry divided it equally with uh, by number three because there each sire was having only three progeny here in this case the sires are varying that is why if you see the table if you see the table you are having total number of observation for first sire it is 48 second sire 72 third sire 34 so what you have to do you have to square the 48 square 72 square 34 square divided by respective number of 
progeny is 3, 4 and 2 and you subtract by the correction factor. So, you will get the between sum of the square as 6.89. Now, what about the, about the error? Between progeny or you can say within sire, within sire. For uniformity, you remember within sire sum of the square. So, within sum of sire sum of the square will be total sum of sire sum of the square minus between sire sum of the square. So, it is simply subtraction. So, it is coming 12. Now, you prepare the ANOVA table. You got all the values. Now, you prepare the ANOVA table. So, here you can see the ANOVA table source of variation between sire and within sire that is between progeny. So, degree of freedom total number of sire is 3. 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. And what about the progenies? So, within sire n minus s that is 6. So, you know why it is coming 6. You just go through uh, the previous slide and you will get why it is 6. Now, sum of the square you have calculated 6.9 sire and uh, if you divide it with the respective degree of freedom you got the mean sum of the square. Similarly, here you get 12 divided by 6 that is 2 and this is sigma square w and similarly sigma square w plus k sigma square s. Now, here you have to find the k. How you will find the k? So, for getting k in the previous example it was easy that k was equal for each and every sire it was 3. Here you have to calculate the k. So, k is equal to 1 by s minus 1. s is the number of sire. So, 1 by 2 minus 1 into n dot. n dot is the total number of progeny. So, total number of progeny summation n i square. n i square means each and every number of progeny per sire. So, first sire 3, second sire 4, third sire 2. So, 3 square plus 4 square plus 2 square divided by total number of progeny n dot. n dot is the total number of progeny. So, in this way you got the k value as 2.89. 2.89. In previous example you got the k value as 3, but here you got the k value 2.89 because the number of progenies were varying. Now you calculate the sigma square from here, sigma square s from the from this value. So, sigma square s is equal to mean sum of square due to sire minus mean sum of square due to error divided by k that is number of progeny per sire. So, 3.45 minus 2 divided by 2.89. So, in this way you got the sigma square s as 0 0.50. So, you got the sigma square s as 0 0.50173. Now, sigma square w you have already calculated that is 2 already here you can see 2. So, phenotypic variance will be phenotypic variance will be equal to sigma square s plus sigma square w that is 2.50017. So, this is the VP. VP. Now, you have to get the intra class correlation. So, what is intra class correlation? Intra class correlation will be given by the formula. Intra class correlation is equal to sigma square s divided by sigma square s plus sigma square w that is sigma square s variance due to sire divided by VP. VP because VP is equal to VP is equal to sigma square s plus sigma square w. So, here you put the value of sigma square s and sigma square uh, that is vp sigma square p and you got the t value as 0 0.2005 0 0.2005 so this is the value of t now you know h square is equal to h square is equal to 4t in case of half shape and in case of full shape it will be 2t so, here you will multiply it with the 4. So, 4 into 0 0.2005 divided by 2.507 and it will come with around 0 0.80, 0 0.80. So, this is the estimate of heritability. This 0 0.80, 0 0.80 is the estimate of heritability. And what it indicates? The genetic variability in birth weight in Sahiwal herd is 80 percent. So, 80 percent uh, is the genetic variability in case of Sahiwal as per the given question. So, this is how we are calculating heritability by paternal half shift correlation method. As we have already seen, there are lot many methods of estimation of heritability, but this paternal half shift correlation method is mentioned in our syllabus and it is being mostly used in India. So, 
that's all for today's class thank you thank you very much if you want any other uh, numerical or practical aspect you can write me into the comment section thank you thank you very much